name is Todd Swank and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Nortec and I'm here today with Don Daninger, Vice President of Engineering for Nortec and we're going to do another segment of What's New at Nortec. It's April 20th, 2012 and today's project is a pretty exciting one. It's a, a Luster storage server. Dom, what the heck is a Luster storage server? Well, uh, it, it's not something that shines brightly, but <laughs> but uh, kind of luster. a different type of luster. What uh, what it is is parallel network file systems. So, uh, and uh, the attractive thing about it is the scalability and speed. Wow! So parallel network file systems. Right. So it's a big server, and it's, it's basically it's, a lot of drives. It's actually a group of servers, and that's part of what the parallel nature is of this. And what it, uh, what it does is it uh, scales up in capacity okay. as well as speed. So both at the same time, which is really something that is out of the ordinary. Most storage you can scale in capacity, but it doesn't get all that much faster. Maybe you can bond uh, the uh, network connections or something like that, you know, and, and gain some limited uh, speed of, of access or something like that. But, uh, it's very limited in ordinary storage. With this storage, because it's parallel in nature, it just keeps going up just like a hockey stick. Got it. So when I think of a group of uh, servers together, I also think it sounds very similar to our other products, uh, high performance compute clusters. It, it is to some degree, and they often are seen in the same environments, because what you have in a high performance cluster uh, could be thought of as a lot of storage clients. They, they are very hungry many times for lots of data to be written and uh, read very fast. And uh, in, uh, we had one particular customer here that uh, we shipped a cluster to recently. They're doing computational fluid dynamics work with it. And that requires a lot of data. A lot of data, and uh, the faster you can move that data in and out to the compute nodes, the better, and, and the faster they'll get their calculations. So they currently have this uh, 2300 core uh, cluster tied to standard NFS okay. storage. And it, it's uh, been uh, tweaked uh, as much as possible, but it's still the choke point for the performance of this cluster. So it's actually slowing down their work it, because the storage is just not keeping up with the amount of data that's just, getting processed. It just can't keep up. So uh, what we did was came in with a Nortec Luster storage solution here, and uh, we approached this uh, in, in this fashion here. We started out with a base system here that uh, Luster has a metadata server. Okay. And that's kind of the director that uh, is the traffic cop. Similar to a head node in Cluster. Kind of, yes, very similar to that. And then that metadata server talks to uh, any number of object storage servers okay. and those object storage servers are in charge of their local storage and it could be several groups of storage what we started out with this one is four object, object storage servers and each one of those was attached to a 24 drive JBOD. Okay so each one of these object storage servers has its own set of hard drives dedicated right. to it and right. so then the, uh, the metadata server directs uh, it, tasks or jobs, would you it, say? It's, to it's the traffic cop. Servers? It tells the clients uh, where they can write their data and where they can retrieve their files okay. from. Okay. And by sending it to multiple targets like that, it just it, basically speeds up the performance. It's parallel. Okay. Because this whole thing is interconnected with the uh, cluster, the high performance compute cluster, by a quad data rate and Finiban. Okay. So, but it's not just the fact that it's tied to quad data rate and Finiban, it's tied by a multiple links of the quad data rate and Finiban. And the more object storage targets and object storage servers you have, the more parallel paths you have to access, read, or write the data. Okay. So in our case, you know, it's, it's four paths that's going out to your storage. Each one of those paths is 40 gigabits per second. Wow. Uh, but you can easily scale that to thousands. Really? So yes. there's, is there any limit to how many? Uh, there, uh, there is some theoretical limits, but I'm aware of uh, installations where there's 23,000 clients hitting a, uh, a Luster storage server simultaneously, 
and you're looking at terabytes per second Holy cow. of data moving back and forth. In our case here, uh, one simple analogy is a common DVD has about four gigabytes sure. of data on it. We're transferring data right now uh, for a single client at almost a DVD per second. Holy cow, that's a lot uh, of data. That's a lot of data. <laughs> it's a lot of movies you could watch all at once. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the other thing that's interesting is we did uh, a test with 48 clients reading and writing data simultaneously uh, to this uh, simple four node, uh, four object storage servers here. And they, they weren't fully scaled up. They, owed, they started out, they only had six drives that were striking data across in there, so they're really not anywhere near full throttle yet. Wow. And uh, each one of those 48 clients was reading and writing at about 120 megabytes per second. That's so so it's, it's fast. I imagine a system like that would do real well in a cloud environment. Uh, it could. Websites yeah. dealing with a lot of uh, users simultaneously. Anywhere that you need big storage that's fast. That's, it's a good solution. So it's not this particular customer, this, the server we built or the, uh, the, the system we built for this customer, it was a university doing computation of fluid dynamics. Correct. So do, how much storage do they need on this particular one to start? We started out with, uh, I believe it was like uh, 60 uh, to 80 terabytes here, but they're going to scale that up really soon here. Is there a theoretical limit on how much storage we could have here, or is it basically... It goes up into the petabytes and exabytes. Wow. So uh, Once you get to that level, then... The, uh, the, the checkbook becomes the, the limit. <laughs> that's, the, so. that's the choke point on the, right. uh, the, the transaction. <laughs> Well, very cool. I remember you saying something about uh, the InfiniBand was actually our choke point at one point. Was that, uh, uh, that, that's true. Uh, that's why we're, uh, right now we're seeing a transfer limit uh, for a single client here of about uh, 3.7 uh, gigabytes per second. And that's basically what InfiniBand can that's push what through. That's what the quad data InfiniBand could uh, push through. But then you can start adding, and when you start looking at uh, more parallel paths and you aggregate that all together, then it becomes a sum of those parallel paths. Wow. So it's, it's a unique uh, product. Another way to look at this is many of you that are watching this video may be familiar with RAID arrays. Sure. Where you take a RAID controller and you stripe your data across several hard drives. Several hard drives. Well, what you've got here is yet another stack of striping on top of the existing RAID arrays that are inside of each one of these object storage server object storage targets. So you really can stripe your data across multiple. You can look at this. Your client's writing a file. The client, on an individual basis, every client can have different striping arrangements. Probably wouldn't do that. You'd probably have common striping arrangements, but. But in our case, we had four object storage server, object storage targets. What you can do is write a single file out, but say you want it striped across to all four targets. So that way, you're writing that data to all four targets simultaneously. So even a single file can be split up amongst exactly. multiple, multiple that's, servers. Exactly. That's how you get the parallel nature. Okay. So it's basically like a RAID in a standard server, mm -hmm. but instead of striping across individual right. hard drives, you're basically striping across different servers. Right, exactly. And so the performance must be just incredible. That's why it scales so well. Wow. So, now, so. does this work in a Microsoft environment? or? Uh, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, all of this is uh, working in a Linux environment. And which many of our high performance customers are doing. 95% of the markets are in the Linux. Linux. Yeah. So, wow. so it addresses by far the large majority of the need. Well, and in the so. web environment too, I know most uh, web servers are running right. on Apache, which is another right. version of Linux, so uh, exactly. that, that would work out well in that as well. Exactly. Very interesting. So, um, what other kinds of customers would really benefit from this? I know we talked about this university computational fluid right. dynamics. Right. It, it, could you think of other verticals that uh, might be able to take advantage of this? Uh, Maybe outside of research? Is there any uh, other? Any, anything where there's big data and you have to access it fast with a lot of clients. So that, that's, you know, it could fit into a number of, of uh, different needs like that. HPC is where this really has grown and matured. 
but uh, a lot of this type of thing, and you know, we're seeing it certainly with HBC, where it's starting to move out of the university labs and the national labs and into industry. Absolutely. So uh, now that it's hitting industry, I'm sure we'll have a, a lot of uh, uh, you know uses that maybe aren't foreseen right now. So, so I, I know we're doing a big push in our personal clusters, our smaller clusters, right. for mm -hmm. uh, perhaps uh, single groups of uh, users or departmental right. clusters is another sure. uh, phrase for that. Sure. Would luster storage work in those environments and would it, it benefit those environments? It could. It could. We've got uh, some people, uh, customers right now, commercial customers that are doing a lot of video storage and editing. Well, that's the file sizes are massive. massive yeah. Especially, it's, it's very high definition video. So. Right now, we've got that customer set up with uh, your standard NFS storage. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, that customer, really, the next step might be a luster. That makes so, a lot of sense. So, and are a lot of people doing luster right now, or is it something that it's uh, uh, it's it's something that uh, it was developed originally by Sun Microsystems. Okay. It was released to the open source community a number of years ago. It's really starting to get some traction in the industry. Last year it was uh, one of the hot topics at supercomputing. And uh, the growth is just, you can see a lot of growth happening in it right now. So, and it's becoming a fairly mature, reliable product. This is cutting edge stuff you're working on here. I know you've been is. working on it for, boy, almost a year now, I think, it, developing this product. And, yeah. Uh, right. It's pretty mature now, and we're ready to go. We could take on new we've customers. Got, uh, and, uh, we've got uh, production deliveries done. So Very nice. Okay. Well, anybody out there who's looking for a uh, real high-performance storage solution, please keep Nortec in mind because uh, we can have Dom, uh, Dom develop one for you. Anything else you want to talk about today on the Luster no, Source? I think that uh, tells the story. Well, it's very exciting stuff, Tom. I really okay. appreciate your time today. Okay. Once again, my name is Todd Swank, Vice President of Marketing for Nortech. Here today with Dom Daniger, Vice President of Engineering for Nortech. Our website is www.nortech.com. That's N-O-R-T-E-C-H. If you have any opportunities where we could help you in high-performance computing, high-performance storage solutions like Luster, We'd love to be able to help you out. Please give us a call, 877-808-7438. Thanks so much. Have a great day.